So uh, hello and welcome everyone. I'm super excited to have you all today on uh, Frappe's webinar on partner success stories, uh, where we have our guest speaker, Mr. Wolfram from uh, Femos GmbH based out of Germany, right? Uh, we have a, got a lot of uh, pool of conversations today, including ERP Next for Europe, open source, et cetera. So I would request everyone to stay till the end and have their questions, uh, participate in the question answer rounds we have and everything. Um, a small introduction about me. I am Mayank, uh, working with Frappe Technologies for a good 1.5 years now. I have expertise both in part, uh, product side as well as business side of it. And currently I am the partner manager for the European region, also the business development individual year for the market. Today on the call, we also have uh, my mentor and our VP co-founder, Mr. Omer and few other colleagues from Frappe Technologies, uh, which will be taking part in the conversations later on. To quickly start with the webinar, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Wolfram from FEMOS. So Wolfram has been in the community since a long time, dating back to 2016. We met while working on a project together for one of our customers, and since then the journey has just began. And they recently became our official partners for ERP Next in the Europe region as well. Well, I would like to invite him to introduce himself and take the webinar forward for now. Uh, Wolfram? Yes, thank you, Mayank, for the introduction. Um, as you said, my name is Wolfram Schmidt. Um, I am based in Germany and um, I'll head straight to our presentation, um, which will be started shortly. Let me quickly share my screen. And So welcome everyone. Thank you, Mayank, once again for the introduction. Thank you, Frappe Technologies, for giving me this opportunity. Um, today, I'd like to talk a little about um, Famos GmbH, what we do, about uh, our journey with ERP Next as such, and also about the Frappe partnership. Um, further, I'll talk a little bit about the marketplace and the possibilities that lie with this option to use. Famos GmbH is a um, company solemnly with the purpose of implementing ERP Next here in Germany, Europe, and the world. We have uh, six years plus experience in the field. As Mayank has just said, um, I've been working with uh, ERP Next since 2016. And um, yeah, we have our offices based here in Germany. Um, we have one office in Leonberg near Stuttgart, that's in the south of Germany. And a second uh, office recently opened here in Jena, um, which is in the center and east of Germany. We have a international team of 12 members. Um, our team exists of developers of project management uh, and uh, support agents who will be able to cover all needs which are necessary to do successful ERP Next implementations. Coming back to the marketplace, Mayank has just talked about the project that we have uh, done together. And in this, um, we worked on a app for the Swiss market, Swiss um, localization, Swiss accounting. This can also be found on the marketplace um, to download officially. This marketplace from Frappi has grown quite a bit recently. There are 40 plus apps to be found. Um, I highly suggest that if you have anything to publish on the marketplace you should register as a publisher today and um, put your app on there um, you will find that people will in download and install your app you might not hear straight away how successful it is but uh, this market is growing and uh, this 
Frappiverse um, is also growing with our help, with your help, putting more apps into that field. I'll talk about a little app that we are creating at the moment and the possibilities on how such an app can be a good add-on to the original system of ERP Next. Um, also very important for customers all over the world, uh, many of these apps you find on the marketplace have to do with localization in one way or another. Coming straight to localization, this is obviously something that we have um, we, we've been challenged with from our customers um, here in the regions we're working in. The main re uh, regions we will be working on um, in this coming time will be this so-called Dach region, which uh, is Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. For those who don't know, these three countries, they all have borders to one another, and um, they all speak the same language. This is what uh, combines them, and also they are culturally very similar. Further to the Dach region, and just as uh, interesting and important to us um, from a sales perspective is the European region. Um, also there, the European Union shares a lot of common um, things in accounting, for example, a lot of common regulations that will need to be covered inside of ERP Next. And um, I can safely say already, which are covered in ERP Next. To depict this further, I've uh, made this chart in which you can see the, the common ground of these three countries. Um, and we are in a very good position of providing solutions for these countries. We have, we have Swiss customers, we have Austrian customers, and we have German customers. For our German customers, it's very important to be able to provide for the domestic market. Um, there are certain regularities that have to be met, and these can all be met, um, which I will show a little later on. When Germany does business with Switzerland, um, it's a so-called third-party country, and um, there are certain tax regulations and accounting regulations you have to remember to fulfill. These are on expense and earning accounts. Um, this is something we've implemented in ERP Next and found solutions to do that in a very good way. Further, Austria and Germany share a common ground, and that is that they are both part of the European Union. Here again, we have certain tax regulations that are important that need to be met. And um, with doing some configuration in the system, that also works very well. The basics that we need for a German implementation. Step one is definitely the language. We, see that um, although many German people are able to speak the English language, they will want to have a German user interface, which they are working with. ERP Next has a good uh, translation possibility. So the whole system is translatable and um, this requirement can be met. The next requirement is time and numbers. Um, some businesses want to have four digits behind the comma to have a very, very detailed, um, detailed analysis on their items that they have in stock. For example, this is something that can be covered with the standard functionality of ELP Next. Further, we have uh, currencies and taxes. This is not so important when working with the domestic market because you always have the same currency and the same tax. Once you do this step, if you work as a German company with Switzerland, as an Austrian company with Germany, you will have to look into these subjects of currencies and taxes, um, both of which are covered in ERP Next, and um, we haven't found anything missing there. Further, there are some custom fields. Um, a very common custom field is the so-called perform performance period on a sales invoice. This is um, an, a requirement from uh, one of the most uh, broadly used accounting softwares, DATEV, in the German market. This is something that can very quickly be implemented um, by just putting two date fields into your document. Further, you can use a small custom script if you want to script that there's automatically a month set or something. 
that also is something that is not a big, big difficulty to do. Last in this case is what your customer will actually get in the end. That is a printable PDF form. Um, although we are all trying to get um, our business processes uh, more digital, uh, the requirement of proper spacing on a PDF that could be printed if necessary and probably is printed more than we think um, can be done. This is something it's a little tricky to do, but uh, it has been solved from all sides of the community as well. Um, there is There are a lot of self-implementations, but further there's a app Uh, if ERP Next is, if it can be used um, from a legal perspective, um, depending on the country you are. For the German market, um, we have a so called GOBD, you can see the long version of what it means um, for the non-German speakers. In the end, there's a regularity on how a business um, needs to look after their business data. Um, this can be information like emails, invoices, um, maybe even process documentation on how things are done inside of a business. And um, this can all be met. There are um, many examples that you can find in the internet. There's checklists of what uh, needs to be able to be done. Um, we have things like archiving data, making it uh, unchangeable, um, having version control of data and so on. As I said, most of these features, or all these features are something that can be utilized in ERP Next. They might not be there in an obvious way, but in the end, they are there. Also, the system can be hosted on premise, um, which, is, which uh, meets all legal requirements de uh, demanded by a data protection perspective. Also, the cloud version, which you can uh, host on Frappy Cloud, also has the, the option of hosting in Germany, Frankfurt and um, we'll with that cover that requirement. The ERP Next journey that we have taken, um, the ones of you who have been in this community for a longer time um, will probably know me. Um, I have been on the forum since around 2016. Um, I've been more or less active over the time and um, also put out, put out some questions there that uh, at the time might have been not the, not, not the right questions looking back from now, um, but it has helped me to find into this product to better understand the product and also to learn from others. I would highly recommend anyone who's new to ERP Next to take part in this community as well. There's Telegram channels, there's, there's the discuss board, there's GitHub for the ones who are more uh, tech savvy, just to sort of integrate yourself into this, um, into this Frappyverse as it's called. Um, you should definitely head to Frappy Cloud, uh, click yourself an instance, uh, it's done very quickly. You'll be up online within 15 minutes and um, just try ERP Next. See for yourself, click through it, Try some stuff that you might want to, that your old software might not able to do. Try some new stuff that you just want to try and see if it works. Um, add some custom fields, all these things. It's very easy. Um, once you are past that, I would, def I would highly suggest um, that you think about if this is the right product for you. And um, from a business perspective, thinking, is this a software which can take me to a destination I want to get to? What I highly recommend at that point, also definitely, I'm not going to make a secret out of that, from a sales perspective, um, get a guide to help you plan your trip to reach this destination that you will be setting. Um, 
it is if you do sports if you go to university if you do any learning process in the end of the day it's always good to have a guide who will show you which resources to attend to and when and furthermore to this the all the resources from erp next are very open um, there's no time limits to this there's no opening hours there's no there's mostly no cost um, so you can always learn quicker than your guide is able to show you but uh yeah it's always a swift a swift way to have someone help you coming from the community um we took things more professional we've had our first erpnx customers from i think the year of 2017 this is a small painter and decorator he has a very simple process he needs to write quotations he goes from a quotation straight to a sales invoice. He prints these, he sends these, job done. That was the first implementation we did outside of our own business back then. Um, over time, the product and uh, has had more traction and has more attention. Um, we have been approached by several customers, which led us to found a new business in December of 21. Um, we branched out out of my old company 2IT just with this product ERP Next and um, to further take this professional, as stated earlier, our target is to provide good solutions for the German and the European market. We've noticed in this journey that um, the communication and documentation is key to these implementations. Um, we heavily rely and lean on lean and agile principles um, we are well aware of the complexity of such um, implementations and we see that this is the best approach to take this journey um, because it is it does take time and it does take a lot of human resource to go through with this um, in a good way we also noticed over the time that it is important to get your expectations right. Um, we just all need to be very realistic about this. We as a supplier, a customer, also as a software developer, these things take time for one. That is, that is something we learned um, on this way um, that is very important. Also a second important factor is a budget we um, should provide for such project. Um, there are no cheap implementations. This accounts for, I guess, all software all over the market, be it Sage, be it SAP, be it Microsoft Dynamics. These things, they need a certain budget to be um, utilized in your system and be definitely realistic. The partnership is something we waited up with way too long, to be honest. Um, we did end up uh, getting it done finally. I think it was in March 22. Um, I can safely say it's been helping us from a sales perspective already. Uh, we've had a lot of traction since um, through shared leads and just the fact that uh, we were out there, maybe a couple of LinkedIn posts. We don't know, to be honest. Um, but uh, the business is going great, I have to say. And um, one reason also we think that this partnership is very useful for us, not just for us, for Frappe Technologies as well, and for the whole region here in Germany and Europe. If you go to the community board, to the discuss board, there are, there are many expectations. Um, that this software isn't meeting uh, German, German demands to be used in the domestic market properly. And um, to be quite honest, the question is how good can a software be for a German market that origins and is developed um, in India and all over the world? And uh, we as a partner, this is exactly where we want to step in. This is the gap we would like to fill is we have the we are, we are at timely at the right place. We are based in Germany. We have the same culture. We have the communication skills for this market. 
um, to fill this gap and use the product ERP Next as it is and um, help bridge this gap um, because, yeah, the expectation that an Indian colleague at uh, FRAP details about German accounting might be a high expectation. Also a further point, um, us coming from Germany, uh, uh, an automotive, uh, automobile country, um, we know this here because we have them. If you have good, good roads, you can drive quickly. And uh, good roads, they need to be paid for. And um, I have to say, I'm very thankful that I have found this software, this infrastructure, Frappy in the ERP Next. And um, in the end of the day, it has helped us build a new business from it. And um, also the partnership is a way of giving something back um, to this company, which has such good opportunity um, for us and also for others. Putting aside all the differences that we have in countries and cultures, um, we have a lot of common things that we have. And um, an example that I'd like to show here is a standard business process, which we really all have. Every professional business has this process. Sometimes it's more clear, sometimes it's less clear. For example, if you go to a supermarket to buy some groceries, you will have a quotation. The quotation is this small leaflet that you'll find on the shelf, which will tell you how much your um, orange juice will cost. Once you go to the sales register and put it on there, you commit to this quotation and um, a sales order is placed with this supermarket. In that case, um, you will receive a receipt and make a payment. Um, the order there is not always the same, but um, I, I'm sure you've all been in the supermarket before. And um, what we get handed over is we get a leaflet, um, which can be considered a sales invoice or a delivery note, where we can see the orange juice on how much it cost, who we bought it from, basically who it was sold from. We have a posting date and all these things. A payment has been done either via cash, either via mobile phone or other digital payment. And this is a process we see is shared from every business. You can go to a doctor, a lawyer, an engineering business, every business does exactly this. I say this and I'd like to highly emphasize this at this point. This is what we should all concentrate on with these ERP Next implementations. We can use ERP Next outside of the whole accounting sales and so on. But in the end of the day, if we want to use ERP Next for our business, this is what we want to do. We want to put our product out there via quotations and we would like to sell it and make our um, customers pay for that product so we can have and build a successful company. Implementations with ERP Next. We have done and are working on several implementations. Um, we do these in the domestic market. We have German companies, as I said earlier, European um, customers in Austria, customers in Switzerland, even so far as, the, as Saudi Arabia. And um, during these implementations, we have done a lot of learning. Um, and here on this slide, I'd like to, to emphasize some keys that we have learned during these implementations. Every implementation of such software brings a lot of change to our company. The change starts with that we are using a software that looks different. And um, it is important that we all are aware that this implementation will bring change, change for the good. We have to be agile about these things. We have to embrace it. And um, all project partners, uh, may it be customers, may it be people using the system, may it be developers. Um, we all have to communicate a lot. We have to think, think ahead a lot what will happen. Um, and the best way to do this is definitely do this in small steps. 
we notice that especially small steps can make a big, big difference in the whole process of implementing the system. We always have a point in time where data originates. And this is the, the time that this data comes into our system the first time. This might be a sales order number. It might be a serial number of something that is happening in production. And identifying exactly the point where this happens is very important. Then normally this data goes through the company and always at some point ceases to exist as well for our key process, which is the transaction of quoting this item to selling this item. To manage this and make this solid and make it a solid system, we can really rely on for the future. We have to be very thorough to do this. As emphasized earlier, this takes time. Being thorough takes time. And um, we all, as project partners, the suppliers, the customers, the developers, we all have to provide the necess necess necessary resources um, to meet these goals. A second learning that we have done with this is transparency. Having all your data and all your transactions and all your employees and maybe even all your suppliers on one system, it makes you very transparent. And during an implementation process, you'll notice no, st no stone is unturned. And turning these stones, as I said earlier, it brings a lot of change. But this change is something good as well because this is for us the opportunity to sort of refresh all our processes. It's like a big cleaning up that we're doing. Because if we turn every stone, obviously we'll find every floor that has been made. And these turn to be very visible. And it is important for us to handle these in the right way, um, to talk to the people, to help them learn that they can all be better, that we as a whole in this company and also in this implementation can get better. Um, in the end of the day, if we go to this one system, what we are doing is we're collecting data, data, and more data. This is though mostly the reason why we are doing it. And this is also what will make you more successful in your business and more com competitive in your field. Doing all this, I found a very nice picture. This is also something that we, um, that we put, put out there um, during this implementation. During these implementations, it is, somewhat cumbersome at start and it feels like crawling and um, we have to learn to walk then we learn to run and then we learn to fly with this system and we have to take these steps as well um, otherwise it is at some point like jumping out of a driving train and trying to run along it just doesn't work and it can be very tiring for us so these are the steps we like to take. Um, and these routines is also something that start slow and go faster over time. To do this, ERP Next is a very good system to support our routines. The steps we take to do this is that we look at doc types. These might be standard doc types that are already in the system or newly created ones. We clean these up to our needs. So we have all the fields we need and especially also don't have the fields we don't need. The second step is that we set permissions for the system, for different users, for different departments to further optimize these doc types. Then the next step for us is that we supply a very user-friendly documentation. A user you know, we all know these things. We go on holiday, we come back to the office. Things are sort of, we sort of know what we need to do. But uh, yeah, we are all good at forgetting things also. That's not a problem. We just make a good documentation and then you can swiftly be back on point as soon as you need to. The last step of implementation that we then take is to automate all this. So 
as you saw in the picture earlier, we go from walking and then we want to go to flying. The automation part is the flying part that we all want to reach as a business. I think especially business managers, HR departments are aware of um, costs that need to, need to be managed, especially in future, especially in markets like Germany or, or Europe, um, where it is high, uh, hard to find highly qualified personnel, which should not be wasted on highly menial and repetitive tasks. ERPNX provides many uh, solutions for automation. These are start very simple and um, work very well in combination. Automated reports can just be like an Excel sheet that you will be sent to every week, every month, every day, as you wish. We can set auto assignments. So a new quotation is created and it's automatically based on certain um, data, which is on the quotation assigned to someone. Further, we have notifications, which could be if a quotation is created with a value of higher 10,000 euros, then someone specific who is named on this quotation should, should also further be notified. This is something that can be done automatically. In combination with workflows, you can further optimize the process and make this system and the process of going from a quotation to a payment as easy as possible for your employee. Just to show an example of how such a thing can work, this is a sales invoice. Um, I'm sorry about the German uh, green and red box here. I'll quickly explain. So basically on a sales invoice, there's many information that we can use for this automation process. Um, we have dates on there. We have um, email addresses on there, um, as you can see here. And um, in the items table, we have information about values and maybe number of products. All these numbers can be used for automation to do exactly what I explained earlier, send notifications to certain people, delegate these things to certain people, let them be part of a report for certain people. These that we have with such a product, um, I've said most of them already, but um, is speed up our process a lot. Um, we have an opportunity to collect all our data at a central point, which makes it very, very useful. Go back to this data, find it, have a whole history of what we do, how we do it, and especially how quickly we do it. One further opportunity in ERP Next is that it can grow with your business. You get the whole ERP once you down about $10 a month will give you the whole product. This can be a little intimidating at start and it's it definitely at start. But what ERP Next and Frappy gives you the opportunity to do is to slowly progress into this software. And as your business grows, you can always reflect this in ERP Next and ERP Next will also help you grow your business. Further, and a very interesting point, uh, which we see with big competitors, uh, which seems to be a problem, uh, their total cost of operation. An implementation of ERP Next, as I said, it's not cheap um, and it cannot be done for free, though the software is more or less free. This is something though, once we use this and go with the software, that is something very attractive. I'd like to give some examples um, to custom apps that we've made. I've talked about this a little earlier with the um, with the marketplace and possibility of something about the data data transfers, which relates to the accounting part, which we have um, talked in the localization. Custom apps. Important when developing custom apps is definitely to find out what ERP Next does and how far it goes. The second part is how does it do it? Pretty thoroughly 
um, what ER Phoenix is doing. And then it, we should identify what need that we have cannot be met by the system and why. This is the gap we want to fill with such a custom app. Um, once we've done this, um, then I'd highly recommend it to publish it, you know, just for the sake that work doesn't need to be tw uh, done twice. An app that we have um, developed with a customer is um, a add-on to the HR module of ERP Next. We have seen that um, there are some problems that we came across. This is that uh, employee check-in on a uh, which is a holiday a leave type uh, cannot be made. And there's no such functionality as part-time shifts, um, which also relates to part-time attendance. And um, there's no easy way of showing overtime visibly. So I have a sort of target hours and I have an actual hours that my employees have worked. To do this, we created a add-on. It's called HR add-on. Um, unfortunately, it's not on the marketplace yet, um, but soon to come. And it's very small. It has three doc types and, it's, and has one report and uh, covers all these requirements stated earlier. This is what this report looks like in the end. Um, it gives us a good overview of how many hours an employee has worked, um, how long his break time has been. Uh, we can see with the blue arrow, we can see the difference of the hours. We can see the first and, and um, with the red arrow is we can straight away identify that there's something incoherent with the data and very cool. The next steps that we will take with this app is publish it on the marketplace, get feedback from the community to further improve. The community will always help you to find bugs in the system or help you to further optimize the solution um, for a broader, broader need that they will come up with. And um, the last step is um, that we would like to enhance this app also to what I call here is get back on track. So the whole subject of overtime has an overlap into accounting at some point. And um, this is, we would like to bridge at some point where we are able to um, submit these entries and put them over into account. The second example I'd like to show is um, the possibilities how to get your information, your accounting information from ERP Next into Dativ. With our customers, we have done three different implementations of this solution. Number one is just automate a PDF sent to Dativ Unternehmen online. Um, this is where Dativ software, third-party software, um, you can imagine also scanning a paper invoice and uploading it to this platform. What the platform does is it reads as much as it can via OCR, add additional information, and then it goes to your, to your accountant or your tax consultant um, to be further processed. This is mostly done by um, smaller and mid-sized companies where the value of um, doing their own accounting uh, is not really an, an, a key point. A second way of doing it is um, CSV export. I can custom report, um, custom create a report within ERP Next. Um, invoices. I place all the data that I need there and um, get all the columns I need and just download them and um, hand over a CSV to my customer. This is also a solution that we have used for other softwares in the field apart from data uh, data um, this was uh, addison accounting the third solution which is probably the smoothest in the end but also the one that is uh, funding and needs a lot of thought put into is doing this via api exports 
Um, I'll get to that in a minute. So with this automate PDF, here's an example of how to do it. We create a custom field in our invoices. Um, data provides us with an email address, as you can see here. It's but very similar. And um, we just set this as it's always the same address. We can always set the same address in sales invoice and all the other, uh, the other one in purchase invoice and uh, just set up a notification that this invoice will be sent on submit to this address with a PDF attached. And we send an invoice to a customer. It will be sent at the same time to my accounting software. The second one I've shown CSV export. Um, we do need some knowledge about accounting to set the right accounts into our system. They need to be set. And that is not something anything anyone can do. Um, further, we have to set some custom fields. I talked about this field earlier um, where we have the performance period on an invoice. This is something that should be built in and also thought about if it is on the actual transaction or if, if it has something to do with the items on the transaction. Further, we create then a custom report, which we can also then export. The third solution is um, just knowledge and accounting. Um, we need to set up some further fields. And in the end, we need a professional who will help us configure this API and export the right data and also the attachments to be transferred to the software in the right format. So coming to an end from my part, um, I'd be happy to answer some questions. Um, I've listed here the four uh, subjects we've talked about, I've presented today, and um, I'm happy to take your questions. Any questions for Wolfram? Uh, that's true like well from it was a great presentation from your end uh really inspiring as well i'm a guy in automation i love automation how software can solve your problems make things easier you did show how it works and a uh, great localization also i've been working with you for, for a long time and i've seen how uh, localization has helped a lot of customers out there so uh really appreciate your efforts and the presentation you had today Yeah, so uh, oh, this is more of like a question in, which comes in terms of consulting, which uh, the partners do offer, right? Uh, Wolfram has his own team, which offers uh, consulting from their end. So we uh, move on with more questions, right? I'd like to invite Omer on the call. Uh, so to give a couple of words from his end, and then we we'll probably take it forward. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Mayank, and uh, presentation will come. Always great to hear from you, uh, and thanks for motivating the community also. Uh, just wanted to basically set the uh, context as to why uh, all these webinars, which we have been having uh, for the past few months, you know, is very crucial for us. Uh, so uh, every organization basically has its core competency, right? Uh, and uh, we as an organization. Core competency is in uh, building new products, and I think uh, hosting to some extent. Uh, whereas, uh, when it comes to an ERP solution, there are lots of moving parts, and making one project really requires lots of people. You need someone who can basically do you know, consulting, you need, some, you need someone who can do data migration, you need someone who can do customization as well as like that. And all these expertise put together, you know, we can actually make a project a success. Project. So while we are saying uh, we will actually restrict our activities, we are actually leaving money on the table, literally, uh, for the partners, the regional partners. You know, so just for an example, if you make the case, uh, yes, yes, yes. Huh. Yeah, 
Sorry for the interruption. Um, so, uh, for example, let's say uh, my aunt is handling the European region. What we plan is basically will evaluate the approach of the client as the need requirement, as decent time frame for the region, as the uh, you know, budget uh, requirement for the region. And from very initial stage, let's say he would actually do pre sales together and uh, you know, try and close with uh, with different contracts. We would only basically uh, give a contract for product warranty and stuff like that. Contract for implementation and support and customization, which uh, I think even customers would from is there, just like you other guys. You know, so there's someone in France, someone in Germany, someone in the UK, and the people and the customers actually like to have someone uh, hand holding them uh, locally. So that that really matters to them and also helps us, uh, you know, to kind of turn around the lead into a customer much faster and much more efficient. Mm -hmm. That's the approach we are taking as an organization going forward, which means we we'll need lots of full programs. <laughs> Uh, each of different country because the market is huge. I mean, it's a seven hundred billion dollar market as per one of the partner. So uh, there is enough for everyone, you know, uh, for us to achieve. So uh, uh, we want to respect to our expertise what we do, with, and we want to basically let our partners take in lead in their own regions. And uh, yeah, is this, I think what we really plan. So uh, Wolfram is I think a great. Uh, you know, a success example right in front of us. He has built his business around the Airfinex, which very much validates that uh, in spite of having so much, so many alternatives like, oh, you know, the food in and city and whatnot, even in the European space, uh, for us to penetrate uh, with the Airfinex. You know, we have not even scratched the surface with us. But yeah, there is, there is definitely an undercurrent which we really need to capitalize on. Uh, and uh, you So that he can explain uh, uh, why why you know, uh, becoming a partnership would be really, really beneficial to us. Thank you, thank you so much, Umair, uh, for your uh, kind words across and showing how important partnership is when we are developing the product itself. Right, our team works on the product, and we have our own team of partners who work on the other services, development, consulting, and everything which is a good ecosystem. So, uh, Wolfram, if you have to answer those questions, just can take a minute and then I'll proceed with a small, small presentation I had for everyone. It's basically precise and talking about what ecosystem we are trying to build here in the open source market, right? So, uh, Wolfram, do you need some time for that to answer those questions? We'll take later. Um, I brief answer um which module app have we implemented for the german market um specifically we haven't implemented a app specifically for the german market we have an app out there called it management which is um, just for it systems engineers to manage their uh, so that would be what we have on our app side, then we have this um, Swiss app. Um, the question, what about bank connections, Zipa? Um, on soon, um, we have seen there are the libraries out there, Python libraries to do exactly to push this solution for the moment, but I'm sure um, they will come. To the question, if uh, we do offer training, uh, is exactly what we do, is uh, we just sell our services all around ERP Next. We are not worried if we do support, implementation, development, or, tra or training. Um, the more you can do as a customer on the system yourself, the better, um, because, you know, help you with the difficult stuff and uh, get through with the easy stuff um, as quick as we can. Uh, answering those questions. We start with the presentation I've kept in the end for today. 
this is basically again talking about what kind of ecosystem we are trying to build up on and what power we want to give it to the users and contributors partners etc technologies currently at this particular situations we are with partnership we are present across 17 plus more countries we cater to around 5000 customers more than that that's basically involving all our products that's erp next and universe around it which is your frappe school where we train certify people frappe cloud where we host those platforms including in multiple countries based on their data requirements for more than 15 years building erp next for all those years and till date we are open source entirely we cater to audiences uh, users including zero dawn from india uh, our largest stock they have a lot of transactions and how capable our system is basically throughout uh, now let's talk about erp next and open source and catering only to the european market right now why open for this open source and for this there is an example which i'll like to share that basically starts with open source is the future people have been working around are we still have the official european commission right which runs the entire organizations there uh, is strategizing on open source technology since 2000 internally to make everything open source open science right make every to the audience to the users to the readers to the contributors um not right now it's even more so if you get time just open the uh, open source and european union platform and you'll get a lot of documents out there which talks about security safety of open source systems so what can we do here right as as frappe as uh, people working on erp next what contributions can we put in b market is basically create an ecosystem of partners contributors which in the end is going to benefit the users by enhancing the power of open source technology right now what by this what i mean is wolfram basically explained most of it the marketplace apps the customization done on the uh, local level for creating that market giving the open source uh, technology to the end user to have a low maintenance cost of the uh, product then a lot of things where which a proprietary software this what we need is a frappe partners right we can't do everything alone i'll give you the reasons for that and basically for an ex- as an example we have this symbiotic system right where we, two organizations work together to create a just a very good environment so basically let's swim together what does this mean is just here one second yeah so what does this mean is basically as frappe we as omer said right we are giving a lot of uh, market out there out of those 700 billion dollars in the erp systems we just want to focus mainly on the product right our team works day in day out creating better features in erp next keeping everything open source so all the services which includes the implementations the customizations is what we want to share it with the partners we have kept the uh, smb market also open from them so that we they can focus and create a more revenue on that side and build a more uh, product reach now with this uh, we do need localizations and uh, in in sense of uh, we get a lot of leads around the year. now what happens is there are leads from france there are leads from spain germany austria switzerland this is something which is humanly not possible to cater to everything together and that's why we need a good network of people who would really want to work in those regions with us so that they can focus on services and we can focus on the product uh localization definitely as would beneficial for the erp system the open source system out there in germany now why do you want to become a partner and what benefits do you get i have listed down everything uh, i can go through them individually but i if so there are like a lot of new people not of old people out here on the webinars so i just keep the screen open for a split of second so that you can go exactly what uh, we offer you and uh, this is like basically your enablement giving a dedicated partner manager to you be there in the pre sales sales part of uh, leads when it comes to enterprise levels frappe even if the services are sold right post services like support is something which we will take care of on different levels and everything works on a different model model of commission based which uh, we can talk later on uh, if you, you can reach directly out to me and i'll just share the details with you regarding that 
picture bronze silver and gold again something if you are interested and i will definitely be there to answer all those questions now coming to erp next wolfram has explained most of it but just give you a brief of what why someone should even use erp next is basically open source customization now giving the flexibility to the end user right we the source code is open the module is very much customizable according to how you want to use it what do you want to use it workflows automations over that that is something an open source software is offering you over that we offer you support on that like we will take care of the product no matter a uh, different instead of getting more applications out there so if we keep the next uh, repo with us right we will make sure the security updates the bug fixes are there on those uh, main, main uh, repo and not on the fork ones because everything becomes uh, difficult to manage later on and with custom apps the flexibility the uh, product improves a lot and uh, that's it from my end uh, basically and just a small quote sharing about what open source uh, by linus towels is basically uh, in open source community we feel strongly that to really do something well you have to get a lot of people involved and that's why we are there and we have a good network of partners contributors around the world uh, and users helping us achieve that goal uh so any any questions uh, for anyone just uh, put it down here uh, we'll be there to have a quick uh, question answer on with everyone uh thanks thanks man for the presentation uh, a quick addition or suggestion perhaps if we can also highlight uh, frappe school certifications and you know uh, training which is actually we are doing for free for the partners that's like one additional added advantage uh, we are eventually is into assurance business right all of us uh, be it an oem or a partners and that certification or uh, you know training really lead ensure that you are like uh, up to the mark when it comes to product features and uh, you know you have something like knowledge uh, or give a, build a credibility guys the customers uh, so that's one added and you know uh, uh, advantage that you know, most of the prospective partners are appreciating we have a uh, great training plans coming up uh, as soon as next week uh, on trappe framework training on uh, erp next core functionalities and things like that so that's something which comes handy with the partnership uh, so just wanted to add that correct okay, okay. so once you are a partner or before also we take care of your trainings right we have trappe schools uh, trainings given out to them and on by one of our best people out there in trappe technology that's correct omar thank you for uh, adding those points um so anyone has any more questions out here or uh, we'll be glad to answer them regarding anything right partnership we are be next trainings what we have what what are plans for the future for example like we are planning to be there in europe uh, in couple of months get a community gathering we'll have a lot of good discussions out there locally customers prospects partners so all right no worries uh, even if in future you have any more questions uh, i am putting down my email uh, you want to reach out in terms of partnership you can directly go to erpnext.com uh, for uh, contact us form for if you want to use see how erpnext works and just my email there for any more queries uh, i'm just putting it out here you can directly reach out to wolfram as well uh, for any uh, german related queries you have right so wolfram any end uh, speech you want to give apart from that i'm very much looking forward to further taking this journey with you guys no i'm good thank you all for your time yep uh, dankeshin everyone for your time today uh, thank you so much for be i mean really appreciate your uh, being here today thank you so much